Rise and Shine family. So check this out. I'm at the airport. And uh, while I'm here, uh, I had a thought. And the thought was, you know, why is it that when you tell a believer that you don't believe in their particular God, they ask questions like, how did we get here? Or who created the world? Um, and it's because it's a core belief, right? It's a foundational belief. Man has learned to navigate the world due to our uh, perceived reality, our perceived reality. And uh, we navigate the world by using things like tools, uh, our tools being language, mathematics, calculation, measurement, um, things of that nature, right? The problem is philosophy, right? The problem is we believe that these things actually have something to do with the world. And if you change any of these core type beliefs, right, um, then it causes cognitive dissonance. And what that means is I can't put my reality together if you remove this, this belief from me or this tool from me. So say that when you're born and you're given these tools to survive, you're given, you know, a name, right? This is all something that is contractually agreed upon, such as mathematics, uh, language. None of these things really exist in real life. You're not going to go out in nature and find a foot or an inch, right? But you can build a house that is balanced, right? Um, using these calculations, but you have a hard time trying to show an alien, right, what your foot or inch is because that's all made up to you, right? Um, unless you set them down and taught them and they agree to your standard of measurement, right? Uh, this is how it works. Same thing with language. This is why you can go somewhere else and you won't understand what someone is saying. So we believe over here that our language is the way. And if someone says a curse word in our language, then it's a really bad curse word. It really is a curse word. It's not a series of words that man put together or sounds that man put together, called them words, and they said which ones would be bad and we just believed it. No, they're actually bad words. And this is how our frame of mind works. So when you tell a person, you know that no such that there's no such thing as curse words, they can't rationalize that because they haven't done the math on, well, who has the power to create them? Even if a God exists, why would your English words or anything from your English dialect or language be considered a curse word? When man made the words up, let's be honest, right? Well, this is how it happens when you remove a foundational belief. Uh, someone begins to ask questions um, because they're trying to fill in the gaps. So when you say, um, you know, let's say you go way back in time and you say, you know that the earth is not really on a giant turtle's back, right? Someone would say, well, then, how, then what are we on? Then what are we floating on? And again, it's, uh, it's, all, it's almost like an appeal to ignorance. They, well, then you tell me where we are. And you're like, well, I don't have the answer. But they, but they actually need that answer because you, you've removed uh, a foundational teaching. You remove something that they truly, truly believe and they've based their life upon or some, something of their identity and their reality upon. Uh, like a person, if they found out that their father is not their real father, they are still who they are internally. Their DNA makeup is exactly the same. The person they look in the mirror and see, their, per their personality and their mind, everything is going to be exactly the same, but it will rip your world apart to find out your father is not your father and you would, or your mother is not your mother or, or your brother is not your brother, anything like that. Um, because you, you're having to add something to what you had became comfortable with, you know? And so believers have became comfortable with the idea of God um, and they, came, they became comfortable, comfortable with the idea of God in the Bible. So when you say that you don't believe in God or, or their idea of God or that God inspired the Bible, this is why these questions come, you know? Why is it that we're here? Who created us? This is actually them panicking. Um, they're grasping for anything that they can hold on to, but they're realizing that everything is going to be frail and break. It's kind of like if, you're, if the ground falls beneath you right now. It opens up and you begin to fall. You're going to reach out and try to grab onto anything that can, that can break your fall. Even if it's a small string of yarn, you're going to grab it. If it's a toothpick, if it's a small branch or twig, you will grab, on, grab onto it to keep from falling. You're not going to rationalize, that's probably not strong enough to hold me up. Let me look for something stronger. You're just going to be reaching for anything, right? This is what happens. So when they're reaching, it's with these questions. They reach with the questions. You know, you, you must have didn't read it right. You must be misunderstanding. You must be angry with God. You are an apostate, right? Um, you just want to go live your life, right? Uh, you were never really real. You were never a part of this thing. You were never really a believer. These are things that they latch on to trying to survive, trying to maintain their matrix or maintain their reality. So when people do this to you, don't be offended. I don't typically look at people uh, for their, for their avatars or their personality. I try to see them like a brain. Just imagine you're working with a brain. And with a brain, there's gonna be hiccups. When the brain understands something and it's trying to understand how to navigate the world, 
and you give it something different or take away one of its core beliefs, there's gonna be cognitive dissonance. And what you're seeing from the person is the brain's reaction. It's just being displayed and manifested through the person's actions. So don't blame the person. Know that it's coming from a place, the brain. It's coming from a place of trauma, right, of confusion and pain. This is what happens when you give someone information that they weren't privy to, especially when that information, the information that they had prior to that uh, made them latch onto the world or feel confident in something. When you take that from them and they lose that hope and they're trying to grasp and, and figure, refigure life out on the spot, they're going to ask you questions because you've given them this bit of information that they don't know what to do with it. So now they're asking you. And I, I, it hit me. When this first started happening, I used to be like, man, why y'all why bothering me? Why do I have to have all the answers in the universe? Because I don't believe in a belief. But now I understand. They need it. And they don't understand that they actually don't need to know. The world is a beautiful place whether or not you know the origin of your creation. But in their minds, what do I do? Because I thought I knew the answer to this question and now I don't know the answer to it. It means that there's more research to do. It means that there's more thought to be put into what, to, to why you believed. That's all. But people will say things like, well, who's protecting me now? Because I believe that I had a protector. Well, then who, then if, 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 if God don't inspire books, then how does God talk? And, and this is all because we rationalize the world like we, like we were taught to. We believe all of these uh, core beliefs about an uh, entity that we never even saw because we were taught to. Think about it. God is omnipresent meaning everywhere at the same time, omnibenevolent, mean he is full of love all of the time, right? All knowing, which means that he knows everything. Did you know that the Bible makes zero of these assertions? This is all philosophy and theology. The Bible never says any of these things. And we can't rationalize the idea of God without these things because we were simply taught to. So if you were to say God is not all known or God is not good all the time or God is not everywhere at the same time, this would jack a believer's mind up because they need to believe these things. You understand? They don't understand that they can really just factor in that this thing doesn't exist. Their core belief is that he does because it's through that belief they have existence, that they have meaning, they have purpose, and they have hope. You understand? Even their afterlife is solidified through this belief. Evidence or not, this is what keeps them held, I promise you. All right, family, I'm about to catch my plane. As you can see, we're about to start boarding up. Wish I could go longer. Be evolution, be the change that you want to see, and no candle loses its flame from lighting another. Peace.